let's start by opening Visual Studio and we'll create a new project and this will be a Blazor WebAssembly project. We'll leave all the defaults and we'll let the project create. The first thing that we're going to do is add the Blazor component. So we're going to right click, manage NuGet packages. I'm going to go to browse and I'm browsing NuGet.org. I want to look for the Infragistics Blazor package and I'm going to install the latest pre-release. Normally you would install the latest stable, but right now we're still in pre-release mode because we are in between releases. So now that that's installed, I'm going to go to imports.razor and I'm going to add a global using statement, which is a new feature in .NET 6. So I'm going to do blazor.controls. Now all of the blazor controls are available to every page in my project. I'm going to go to program.cs and using the builder, I'm going to say builder.services.add Ignite UI Blazor. And now this enables the Blazor controls in my application. So those are the two steps to uh, sort of light up your application with Blazor. The next step is to go to our index.html and we are going to copy this uh, bootstrap link and I'm going to paste this guy in and I'm going to say this should look towards um, underscore whoops, content ignite UI dot blazer and we're going to use the material theme the default uh, well we could use bootstrap as well but we'll, we'll leave it at material just because that is the default uh, that we have for the controls at this moment in the pre-release once we're out of the pre-release you'll have the bootstrap that'll what work and look beautifully so we can save that guy and that is all we need to do to light up our application to have Blazor controls. So now let's go to our pages and we'll go to index. I'm gonna remove this and I'm gonna add an IGB data grid. So now we have a data grid in our project. So let's go ahead and tell it that we want the height to equal, oops. 400 pixels and here's the new feature that's really nice is I can just pass a URL to the data source so I'm going to say our data source is going to equal and we have this remote JSON dot with URI and I'm going to pass it a remote URI Excel to JSON is a host that I have. .io forward slash API forward slash shared. And let me copy this long string here. It's actually share. Paste. So now this guy, if I click it, let's open it up with our Chrome browser. We should see the JSON that is going to start coming across when we run this app. So now we should have a data grid on our default page. Let's go ahead and click run. And like magic, we've got our menu on the left. We have our data grid on the right with our data coming in from the cloud. And the nice thing about the data grid is that it lights up automatically with features. So I can move, I can sort, I can group columns. I can just pick a few different columns, apply this, and it's going to minimize my data set. Um, I can do multiple grouping. So here's a, a multi-level group. So I'm grouping here now by country and contact title, and you can see all my data here. If I go back to country, let's do a select all. I'll apply this. Maybe we'll pin contact name to the left. So now that's pinned to the left. So all of these features are built into the data grid. It's super handy, super fast. And just like that, you can enable your Blazor application with Ignite UI.